All right, let's now look at how to work with audio in Touch Designer. Um, they're generally saying um, if you want to work with audio in Touch Designer, it's always going to be in the chop world. So none of the others uh, really support audio. So um, as you can see here, uh, there's a lot of audio specific chops uh, or like operators. And um, there's a few, uh, like, like a lot of these can also be used to work with um, audio. So generally there's two ways, um, uh, or like three ways to work with audio in Touch Designer. And um, one of them would be the audio file in, just gonna drop that in here, the audio device in, and um, also uh, the oscillator. So the difference is um, the following. In the audio file in, we can uh, load any kind of file. So if we just have a look here, um, it says down here, uh, reads audio from files on disk or uh, at HTTP addresses, and there's uh, numerous file types supported. So um, yeah, all the standard ones pretty much. So if you wanna work with files um, and then drop this, there's always the the sample one um, being selected. So as you can see that here, uh, it's from dumbunit.com. Um, yeah, so you're gonna get used to that sound uh, that you're gonna hear in a second uh, at some point. Uh, you might have heard it even. Uh, I'm gonna, like, y you don't hear sound right now and that's totally fine. I'm gonna get to that in a second. Um, the other thing is the audio device then. So, um, if I just, you, you, you can't really see it nicely because there's a lot of noise apparently in my, um, on my microphone. But um, technically, this is my microphone right now. So, yeah, this is like an external device. This is not a file, but uh, a device. So any kind of microphone, if you want to use your interface and want to play in a guitar or something, or piano sound or whatever, uh, then you're going to use a device in. So the file in is really just for files, devices, for uh, hardware. And then there's the audio oscillator, which is actually creating sound inside of Touch Designer. So we're actually creating a sine, sine wave sound here right now. Uh, we're going to look at that at the end of this video, <coughs> and we're going to focus on uh, mostly the audio file in right now. So um, we have a few options here. We can select the file, obviously. We can um, turn the play on and off. We can uh, change the play mode. I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, we can change the speed of the, of the played file. Um, we can define a cue point, so I could put this to two. It's right now it's set to seconds here. So that's if it now it's set to two seconds, and I could pulse this, and it would always like any time I pulse this, it's gonna be um, started at two seconds of the song. We can turn repeat off if we want to, or um, there's some stuff we can do here. We can set this to mono, or we can change the volume. Yeah pretty straightforward. And we have similar options on the device and not that many though. We can select our device, for example, uh, or the driver. Um, yeah, we can do some, some stuff here. That's not very important right now. We can change the, the sample rate. So you, it, it might be the case that you get a 48,000 rate in, in instead of 44,100. And um, we can also change the buffer length. Um, yeah, I'm gonna bypass this because we're not actually gonna work with it right now. Um, we're gonna work and focus on the file in. All right, so to actually hear the sound, um, let's connect a device out. So we have device in, and this is obviously for input, and um, we have a device out, and this is needed if you wanna hear your sound or if you wanna present your sound uh, on speakers or something. So device out is also like, again, it's talking to hardware. Um, so it's talking to your output. Um, you can select the device output here. So I could uh, change this to like my internal speakers right now. Like my default is this uh, um, interface. Uh, you can also change volume pan, stuff like that here. Pretty straightforward as well. But you always need this. So if you're wondering why am I not hearing sound, then it's probably because you don't have to the audio de audio device out connected to your root. And the root should like you should connect this here if you want to hear the original sound. I'm going to 
get to that in a second as well. Um, so the play mode, uh, just want to briefly show you that. Uh, you can change this to lock to timeline. And now I can like change uh, where we want to hear the sound based on where I drag the slider. Um, this is uh, great if you're working with animation, for example, then you should probably have this locked to timeline. You can also specify an index here, so um, I could like go through this by um, manually or yeah, by setting a different parameter. I'm gonna have this back to like put this back to sequential. Yeah. All right, let's look at uh, the auto spectrum now. And just for uh, the sake of having this a bit easier, for the sake of me showing this to you, I'm gonna put this to mono, so we just have one channel. If I have this to stereo, we have a left and a right channel. Okay, so I'm gonna add a spectrum of my middle mouse here. And um, what this is doing is just kind of reading, or like analyzing this and putting it into a frequency graph so honestly I'm not entirely sure what like uh, what um, frequencies are being represented here like the range of frequencies I'm guessing it's between around 0 and 20,000 or 30,000 like the numbers down here are very strange I'm not sure um, yeah but it, it's like a frequency graph so these are around 100 or 200 uh, Hertz and here it's probably somewhere around 15 to 20,000 hertz, something like that. Um, you can change the uh, FFT size here, and um, it's gonna be faster, but um, it's also gonna be less samples, so it's gonna be uh, not as precise. So if you put this to like 16,000 or something, then it's uh, very smooth and precise. It's also going to take longer. You can always see that if you middle mouse click on here, it says 0.7 milliseconds, which is quite a long time to process this. Uh, you can also use the probe that I showed in the last um, video uh, to, to see how intensive this is. Okay, anyways, why would we use this actually? So um, it's a nice way to see uh, what elements are actually the loudest and like kind of just have a more like a smoother uh, overview of your audio input and we can also use this to uh, convert um, audio easily to like tops or uh, use instancing to create some really cool stuff that I'm going to show you later uh, in the next video okay so let's actually drop an audio filter here now so I can show you something else as well and um, I'm gonna copy this and paste it and put this in here instead. So the audio filter, with the audio filter we can kind of um, cut away a few f frequencies, like we can cut away a part of the frequency spectrum that we don't want to see. So we can, or like here, so we, I've set this to like, or it's default, it's set at default to low pass. <laughs> Can change this to high pass as well. Um, you can see this changes already. So if I have to set to low pass, change this to frequency and put like uh, 200 in here. And you can see it's cutting away most of the the high uh, high end frequencies. So if I go lower with this to like 20, it actually barely changes anything. No, that wasn't 20. <laughs> so um, now we just really get the lowest frequencies and if I change this to high pass and change this to like uh, 3000 then you can see we're cutting away the, the, the deeper frequencies uh, like the lower frequencies so I put this higher to like 10,000 maybe and we really only get the high frequencies up there and the same thing, uh, like this is a visual way to represent this. If you if you actually use this now on the audio device sound, now you can hear um, that we're only using the high frequencies. And I could put this to low frequencies, change this to like a hundred, and now you can only hear like the low frequencies. Mm -hmm. 
And with band pass, for example, I can um, just cut away a certain region of frequencies. No, actually, we're, we're only hearing a certain region. So now we're only hearing the mids. Now we're only hearing the lows. Now we're only hearing the highs. Uh, same with band reject, but the other way around. So I'm uh, just cutting away a certain part of the frequencies. All right. So if you're if you're uh, wait, if you've worked with Ableton and stuff, then you you know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, you don't need to fully understand this. It's totally fine. Um, most important are your low and high pass, um, just to cut away a certain part. So why would we do that? <laughs> um, let's say we want to make this um, audio reactive just to like the kick, for example. So let's say we want to make uh, a circle that is uh, uh, reacting to the the bass drum. So we could do this with an audio filter. There's other ways to do this, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But this is a very simple way to do this. So I'm going to go back here to the 200. Um, I'm actually going to bypass this. I don't want to hear the music constantly. And what we can do now is use an analyze. So I'm going to attach an analyze to this. And um, as you can see, we now just get one channel. And um, let's, let's just drop a circle in here. We just need one channel, right? You remember uh, from the chop, um, the chop video, that um, that we uh, very easily <laughs> explained what samples are and um, the different kind of uh, ways that these are being shown in here, like the two types of uh, ch channel operators. So we here we have a lot of samples. Uh, here we just have one. And here we actually just need one. So what this is doing, it's taking all these samples and just calculating the average of that. But we don't actually want to use this. There is a function called RMS power. That's a lot more useful for this. Just got a message. Um, so yeah. Um, what was I? <laughs> all right, we want to use this now, which is uh, like a nice and smooth cha channel. Um, to drive the, the size of this. So I'm going to actually turn this on so you can see nicely how this is reacting. And I just said it's smooth. It's not actually smooth yet. So there's two ways to make this a smooth kind of signal. And it's something I generally like to do is to actually put the audio spectrum before the audio filter. No, actually the other way around. and then analyze this because uh, it's going to give you a, a, a lot smoother signal. So, yeah, it's kind of a nice way to do that. Um, now let's uh, actually rename this to like uh, audio and let's add a null to this. And in this case, we're, we're like getting a um, number between like around 0 and 0 0.2 so we could actually just use this um, as the size so I'm just gonna make this viewer active drag it on here say chop reference and in this case we're lucky because um, the size is um, like this value range is pretty perfect actually for a circle but uh, let's say we wanted to move uh, we wanted to use this as the fill uh, fill color then now it's just going between 0 and like 0 0.2 so we would have to map this um, so let's change the one here to a 0.2 so now it's uh, our range uh, makes more sense to see this better we could also add a trail here so now we see okay our uh, value is around 0 and 0 0.2 something so let's actually change this to like 0 0.25 and we could put that in here and now we can see oh this is going pretty nicely between 0 and 1 something like that so um, yeah that's a nice way to to see how you have to map this to onto a circle 
Um, let's just copy and paste this and put this to like 0.3. And now we could use this as the radius. So there you go. Now you have an audio visual. <laughs> we have a, a circle that is that which size is reacting to the kick or like the lows and the fill color is also like its color is also reacting to that if you want to even like if you want to smooth this out even more um, you could put a filter on here don't confuse this with the audio filter so the audio filter is really just for cutting off frequencies uh, or changing changing the frequencies and this is for smoothing out the signal so a normal filter so i can put this to like 0.1 so as you can see, it's very smooth now, at point two. Yeah, and, and you can use this um, channel now for really any parameter. So that's kind of how you make audio visuals, pretty much. Because you can, um, I don't know, you could, you could do whatever. You could drop a uh, box in here and um, you can change its the, the box's size to like uh, react to the kick and you can do really anything and um, yeah <laughs> you're very free to to use these um, these channels here for any parameter and any family and yeah it's great because um, it's a lot of fun <laughs> i guess <laughs> All right, so you could also do this um, with the audio filter here for the other frequency ranges, so like mids and lows, uh, for example. I also have a video on beat detection, which is a bit more in depth um, to actually just get a clean signal out uh, from the kick and snare. If you wanna watch that, I'm gonna link that as well. Okay, I'm gonna bypass this because it's kind of annoying. I'm going to look at a few other chops that we have uh, that are like for audios. So one is the uh, audio dynamics. So you can just drop that in here. And with the audio dynamics, you have the option of uh, changing like the, the, the gain and also uh, adding a compressor and a limiter. So if you're working with audio, you obviously know what these are. Um, if you don't, then I guess this is not very important for you right now. Or you might want to get into like the basics of uh, working with audio in like Ableton or something. Um, I'm not going to actually talk about this in depth. Um, I'm going to show you two EQs that we have in Touch Designer. One is the band EQ, um, where you can specifically set certain frequencies to be louder or quieter, so you can make very precise um, how you say you can you, you can adjust very precisely the frequency outcome of this and the same thing with the para eq um here you have three filters uh, that you can uh, kind of add together to also create uh, a nice clean output <laughs> i guess <laughs> can't explain this better um you can change it to frequencies and you can um yeah I guess if you're working with audio, you kind of know what these things are. Okay, so I'm, I'm just so you know, these exist. Um, all right, so two last things. One is the movie, uh, movie, uh, audio movie. So if you drop that in there, nothing is gonna happen. And um, this is because this is only playing audio from from movie files. So if we actually drop a movie file in, I don't have a video with sound right now ready and uh, if you look here these don't actually have sounds but if this video had sound then I could just drop the movie file in onto the audio movie and the audio movie would actually play the sound because usually if you drop a, 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 a movie file in here then uh, it doesn't actually play the sound so you, you need an audio movie to do that but I've, re I've never actually used this but just so you know it's there and um, last but not least, let's talk about the audio oscillator. So the audio oscillator is responsible for creating sounds inside of Touch Designer. So you don't need uh, any kind of external input for this. Um, let's connect this to the audio device out. And you can hear this beautiful um, 
totally not annoying sound. Um, and you can change the frequency, the pitch of this. Uh, you can, um, yeah, I don't know, change the offset. You can change the type, so you can create different kind of sounds with this. So all very basic shapes. Um, you can create some lovely white noise. Um, yeah, and the cool thing is you could, for example, like you can just use an, an LFO to, uh, so we have different inputs here. So like the one is like pitch control, reset, playback source. So um, you can use an LFO, for example, for pitch control. So now you can hear how it's going like up and down. And again, because, you know, what you can do is just Let's actually put that in there, it's more fun. <laughs> um, you can use, for example, so just to have an idea of what you could do technically, you could um, use a motion detector like a leap motion and map the height of your hand, so like your Y position of your hand, to the frequency of this, so to kind of create like a pheromone. Uh, that's, that's what I did once, so it's just kind of an example of what you could do. Um, that is not too many things you can do with this. Uh, I'm gonna link you a channel though, which is uh, pretty great uh, and looks at how to do like delay and stuff like that in Touch Designer. And also one very exciting thing is that uh, I, w I was at this uh, meetup uh, like a couple months ago for before this Corona time thing. And uh, they talked about how they're actually going to implement VSTs into uh, Touch Designer. I'm very excited about that because that's going to mean that you can actually use any kind of uh, VST external, uh, yeah, VST to create uh, sounds and to actually put effects on them and stuff like that and use all the parameters that you have in the VSTs and connect them to Touch Designer. So it's going to be super powerful. I'm very excited for that. Um, so I guess the future of this is uh, quite interesting. So far uh, with the audio oscillator, it's not that exciting, but um, it's still, it's, it's yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I make uh, quite a few audio visuals and uh, you could definitely have a lot of, a lot of possibilities and uh, yeah, there's a lot of ways to create cool audio visuals in Touch Designer. Okay, so I hope this is, um, a uh, kind of a nice overview for you. Um, this is pretty basic. Uh, we're gonna look at how how to use uh, the audio spectrum um, that I showed you. So this thing uh, to create uh, like or how to use that inside of the instancing technique, and um, we're gonna look at that in the next video. So yeah, that's it for this one, and I'll see you on the next one.